In Chapter 7, Lesson 2, we are going to talk mostly about fresh water. We are lucky enough to live in an area near the Great Lakes, which most of the fresh water on Earth is located. Drinking water is also called fresh water. Fresh water has, be has some dissolved salts, but much less than seawater has. After playing hard on a warm day, a cool glass of water can taste wonderful. Almost all of Earth's fresh water starts as rain or snow. Some of this fresh water sinks into the ground. Some collects in rivers and lakes. Some is frozen in ice sheets and glaciers. Which you will, fresh water is not evenly spaced or spread over the world. Some places have much more fresh water than others, which is where we live. But no matter where you are, there is only a limited amount of fresh water. Water should be used wisely. The water supply can be extended by using less water whenever possible. Scientists can help communities to use water wisely. They can give communities information about the location of underground water and about the water's quality. Scientists can also provide technology that reduces the amount of water a community needs. Rain or melted snow that soaks into the ground is called groundwater. This water fills sp spaces between particles of soil and rock. Groundwater keeps sinking until it reaches a layer of rock or clay that it cannot move through. Some layers of rock or clay act like a dam to keep the water from moving deeper. The water can slowly flow over the top of these layers. The layer of rock and soil that holds the groundwater is called an aquifer. You can see the diagram of where the aquifer is located. The top level of groundwater in an aquifer is the water table, as you saw in the previous diagram. The level of a water table changes during the year. It will rise when water is added by rain or melting snow. It will become lower when there is a drought. Many people get their water from wells that go into an aquifer. The ta water table will become lower when people pump water out of the aquifer faster than it is replaced. If we do not use groundwater wisely, some aquifers may become dry. Surface waters include rivers, streams, and lakes. Melting snow, rainwater, and groundwater all help form Earth's surface waters. Water from rain and melting snow flows downhill in small streams. These small streams join to form larger streams and rivers. Most rivers eventually flow into the ocean. Groundwater also seeps into rivers. The area from which water drains into a river is called the river's watershed. What happens on the land in a watershed can affect places far away. If chemicals are placed in the watershed, they may be carried by water to rivers. Rainwater may erode soil from fields and construction sites. This soil could run into the rivers and cause changes to the ecosystems downstream. Many researchers are studying how these and other issues affect watersheds. Sometimes water flows into a place that is surrounded by higher land or blocked by a dam. Lakes form when the water collects in the low spot. A reservoir is an artificial lake that forms behind a dam. Water that forms a lake is not really trapped. Water can leave a lake by flowing into a river, by seeping into the ground, or by evaporating into the air. About seven-tenths of the Earth's fresh water is frozen into ice. Since most of Earth's fresh water is frozen and far from cities, it is hard for people to use. Much of the Earth's ice is on Greenland and Antarctica. In these places, huge ice sheets cover most of the land. The ice sheets are several kilometers thick in some places. The ice cap at the North Pole floats into the ocean. There is no land under it. Glaciers and ice sheets are smaller areas of ice. Valley glaciers are found in the valleys of high mountains. They are long stretches of ice that flow slowly downhill. As valley glaciers and ice sheets flow, they crush and move rock, changing the shape of the land. Glaciers and ice sheets form when each year's snowfall is greater than the amount that melts. The weight of new snow squeezes the snow into ice. Glaciers and ice sheets reach the ocean, large pieces of ice can break off. 
The floating pieces of ice are icebergs. One iceberg that broke off the Antarctic ice sheet was twice the size of the state of Rhode Island. When ocean water freezes, the resulting ice is not salty. The salt is pushed out of the ice crystals as they form. This causes the water around the new ice to become more salty. Remember to fill in your note sheet and go back into the video if you need 